Hello and welcome to more nerdy rodent geekery. This week we have even more WAN with the powerful model called WAN Animate. What does this one do compared to the others? Well, once again, I have a tiny note here. This time around, we're focusing on humans in videos as it primarily features using pose videos to control the animation of images. Another thing is the way it handles longer videos too. So it's now much better at doing things over five seconds, which is pretty handy. Once again, we're going to be using Kijai's nodes and to make these yourself at home for free, you can check out all the example workflows provided with the custom node pack as a fantastic starting place. Also, if you enjoy these videos and workflows, find them helpful, then you can support the channel via Patreon. This helps me to create even more workflows for you and to share the videos with everyone. Of course, the choice is yours and a huge thank you to everyone who has been able to contribute. I like to use what I call the rodent method to make these workflows all neat and tidy, so let's dive right in. First of all, we have the loader, nice and simple with this one. We've got the WAN 2.2 Animate 14B FP8 model in this one. For the LoRa's, I'm using the multi-select this time because we've only got the one model, but we do have a couple of LoRa's. There's the WAN Animate Relight, and also the I to V. Yes, this is more of an image to video than a text to video model there from light X to V. So that helps us reduce those number of steps required. And of course, therefore, the time needed to make your animations. The standard loaders are slightly different this time. As you might have noticed, the T5 loader has vanished. That's because it's over in the text prompt, which we'll see in just a second. And there's a new one here as well, load clip vision. All the other nodes are there as usual, so I'm applying the block swap. You've got torch compile if you want to make things faster, block swap there. If you want to use more RAM and save some of that precious VRAM, of course, a bunch of experimental options as they are experimental. I haven't been using them, but they're there in case you want to. On to the text prompt then. And as you can see, this is a slightly different one. One video text encode cached. And there is that T5 model. The prompt I've got in this case is very simple. Just a man shakes his head and we'll see the man and the video controlling it in just one moment. There's a couple of options here. Maintain background option and image animate. OK, so first up, we've got the input video. And this is just one off one of those stock sites, Pixabay or something like that. So we're loading the video guy with a green screen shaking his head there. And like we saw last week, we're using the robust video matting to mask that guy out. Now there's a couple more nodes in here, grow mask, blockify mask, and uh, draw mask on image. Those are new ones from KJ nodes. And you'll see in just a moment why we grow that mask and why we blockify it. And the final video there shows you the result of all that processing, which we're going to feed into WAN Animate in just a second. OK, so we've got that first bit, which is the video input with the masking. And now there's this second part, which is getting the face, the pose and cropping the video, all sorts of things like that. So the first bit is DW pose that gets us the pose estimation. And the second bit is cropping that video just to get the face. So once again, there's a preview there that shows you the face. And then finally, before we generate the video, we've got our reference image in the clip video in code. We just have a look here at the reference image. So it's good to have the reference image. Well, I set it the same as the first frame. That way it doesn't have to work quite as hard to try and figure out which way their head is facing, all that sort of thing. As you can see there from the title, I used Quen Image Edit. The clip vision in code is fairly simple. It just takes that image. In this case, it was the anime guy, the reference image there, and encodes it and gives us some embeds that we can use later. OK, then. So the first option is maintaining the background. So remember, we've got a green screen on this one. It should be fairly easy to see what the background is. And there's absolutely loads of input. So we've got the VAE, we've got those clip embeds, the reference images, the pose images, the face image the background image, the video mask, video width and height, and of course, the number of frames in total. 
All of those go into this new node, the WAN Video Animate Embed, which goes into the standard sampler. We're using six steps this time, CFG of one because of the lightning and a shift of six. I went all the way up to a shift of 11 because that's one louder and um, they were all much the same. So leaving it at shift six seems absolutely fine. For the scheduler DPM++ SDE beta, also very good. I tried a number of the other schedulers and this one definitely came out the best still. As for the result, there you go. You've now got a sort of anime cartoon style animation of the guy moving his hair. That's pretty good, isn't it? If we go back and have a look at the original input video again, you'll notice this one is 217 frames. So that's quite a bit longer than the original 81 frames that we'd usually play with in things like WAN Vase. Let's take a quick look at that video in full there. So he shakes his hair, lifts his hands up, goes over his hair. Got a rather sad looking expression in this one, but hey, that's just the way things go. And it's it's still very long. I'm still talking and the video is still going. So that's that's definitely a lot longer than five seconds, isn't it? Excellent stuff. OK, so what's the other option? The other option is to animate the entire image. So rather than cutting the thing out using the mask and having the background, we just ignore those two. So here we haven't got the background images going in and we haven't got the mask. The result in this case is you get the background and everything. So you're essentially just animating that one reference image that you put in without using the original background. Of course, the original image was a bit green. It was quite hard to change it from the green screen. But nevertheless, there we go. OK, so is that all it does? Yes and no. There are a few little issues and problems that you may have. So let's take a look at some of those now. OK, so for this one, I've got a slightly different prompt, a rodent man talking in the background are some shelves with bottles on. We'll take a look at the video. This is another long one. So 369 frames on this one. And we've got the dude talking and there's those bottles in the background. We've got the masked video there, which looks like it comes out OK. And then down here, we've got the get face and crop and his face looks OK. So as you can see, this one's quite nice because you've got moving lips as well. I haven't got any videos with audio because finding a stock clip with audio in is like finding a needle in a haystack. But well, if you've got one of your own audio clips, then give it a test at home. For the reference image, I've got this rodent dude. And then let's take a look at the output for the first. Ooh, what's going on there? What's happened to his face? Where, where's my rodent's ears? Now it's it's nice and long. Let's see if we can watch the whole clip. There we go. So he's sort of talking. It's moving his lips very nicely, but we're we're really missing his his ears. What's happened to his ears? A rodent isn't really a rodent without the proper ears, is he? Oh dear. Anyway, but there it is, 369. It's going quite nicely. How do we get those ears? What's going wrong there? Well, first of all, we can have a look at the plain image animate. And as you can see, this one is far better. It's a perfect animation. Look at that. We've got proper rodent ears and his lips seem to be moving. His head isn't all squished up and stuff. Excellent. That's that's really good. I mean, look at him talking. So as mentioned, there's no audio here, so you can't really tell if the lips are in sync. A little bit annoying. But yeah, that to me looks really, really good. And of course, you could always dub some audio in afterwards if it's messing around a bit. In case you haven't guessed what the problem was, basically it's to do with the mask. So we've got an expand of 16 and a block size of 16. And so we get this mask, which basically isn't big enough to fit in the rodent's ears. Let's take a look at another video. Similar issue here. This time I'm using anime style rodent mage sits and talks in his room. We've got this guy here, a much shorter video, just 125 frames. And he's there chatting in his room. That's great. And there's the mask. So we've got a, a fairly decent mask. This time I've expanded it, however, all the way up to 32. So growing that mask a bit bigger, and we've got a block of 32 as well. So is that enough? Well, we'll find out in just one moment. As usual, we've got the get face and crop. And there we go. OK, so that's cropped his face. It's looking nice there. We've got his lips moving and everything. And what have we got for the input image? There we go. So we've got this guy sitting in his room. So that should be perfect, right? Well, sort of, sort of. Um, we, we do have the ears this time, but they're in the wrong place, aren't they? They've all 
pointed up and stuff. So it's trying to fit the face within that mask, even though I did make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see, the relighting Laura has made everything a lot whiter as well. Sitting in a white room, that's a very different set of colors for the robe and his outfit. If we take a look at the plain image animate without using the mask, you'll see what I mean. So there, the ears are the right size and shape. They're not sort of stuck against his head. And we haven't got the, uh, the relighting going quite as white with the background there. So we've got the same shade on the robe and his clothing. Is there anything we can do about that? Yes, we can grow the mask even more. So this time I've got the grow mask there, the expand up to 96, and now it's like a massive area that should be enough to actually fit his ears in. So now when we have a look at the video where it's maintaining the background, yes, the ears aren't quite as tight pointing straight upwards, that's much better. So if you're having problems, maybe you're trying to change it into an animal like this one, it's got big ears or a pig, you've probably seen all the various examples on the WAN Animate page. So there you go. If it doesn't quite fit, then increase that mask size. Okay, this time around, I've got a cute female rodent girl running on a treadmill in the gym with a guy with a white top running next to them on another treadmill. Let's take a look at this video. now. There she is running on the treadmill and you may be able to tell one problem here straight away. It's got a black roof. So there's a lot of darkness in that video. I've got the expand set to 48. So that should cover most of it. But look at that mask video. That's quite difficult to tell, isn't it? What's going on there? And we have a few other issues with this one as well. Down in the face detect. Yes, it's sort of bouncing and jumping up and down and all sorts of things. Now that isn't too much of a problem in this case, but there is a different issue. This is the reference image I'm using. So there she is running on the treadmill. Cute rodent girl. Yeah, nice. And let's take a look at the results. So there she is. She's running on the treadmill. Looks perfectly fine, doesn't it? It's, it's, oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. Can you see what's happening there? Yes, it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And that that face is just getting, oh dear, oh dear, what's going on there? If we take a look at the image animate, so without using that mask as well, is this one okay? Yeah, she's running along. She's running along still and, oh, oh dear, I think I can see the, the same thing happening there as well. Yes, it's getting brighter and brighter again, isn't it? Oh, oh dear. Oh yes. Oh yeah. No, that, that's completely ruined, isn't it? Oh, you can see there definitely when it switches back to the beginning of the video, the colors are completely off. Well, one thing you might have noticed in the WAN video animate embeds node is this color match option. So we've got a few things there. I've got the bottom one selected, HMMKL HM. Does that make any difference? Well, let's take a look. There she is. She's running along, running along. We get the guy in the shirt next to her where it sort of normally because, oh, what's going on here? We've got all these sort of blinking colors at the top and hmm, okay so it's not going quite as bright but we do still have a few issues are we doomed is there nothing we can do about this at all well as it happens yes there is something we can do this time around there's one tiny little change and that is to use this node down here the wan video context options now this option is a little bit slower and Basically, we've got this constant in here, 77. So now it's just doing 77 frames at a time rather than the full length of that video. But when we take a look at the video, there she is. She's running along, running along. And I don't think I'm seeing any issues. So there's no problem with the color of the roof there flickering. It doesn't seem to be getting brighter as it goes along. Yeah, that, that seems to have done the trick. Excellent. So this one I was testing with shift five as well to see if it did make any difference. I think you'll be fine on shift six too. But the main thing there is using the context options. Awesome. So there we go. I think I've covered most of the potential problems you could have with this. And remember, WAN Animate is just one in a series. So do be sure to check out the others if you haven't already. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.